I'm Christy Sumich and I teach a course for the first year experience program called Disease and Healing in New Orleans. My course, Disease and Healing in New Orleans, we start talking about epidemics of yellow fever and how they ravaged the city for over 100 years into actually the early 20th century. And we compare those epidemics of yellow fever with plague in Great Britain and with also epidemics of yellow fever going on throughout this country to talk about how society reacts to major outbreaks of epidemic disease and also how disease informs public health policy. And we actually move all the way into the modern era and we talk about healthcare in post-Katrina New Orleans, how New Orleans is meeting the challenge of having to basically rebuild a healthcare infrastructure, how the needs of the population who utilize Charity Hospital are being met currently, and how that's gonna change into the future as well. One of the things that I really want my class to take away from this particular seminar are the really translatable skills of being able to look at a topic, sometimes a topic that they have very preconceived notions about, and then to learn how to properly research and to process that information and eventually to form possibly a new opinion about the subject, but one that is based on their education of the topic. And I feel like they may never pursue additional studies in what I'm actually teaching them, and that's okay. If they can take that skill set with them into their upper level learning, then I'll feel like they got something really valuable out of this seminar. I think the difference between this seminar and courses that freshmen entering Loyola may take otherwise is that this truly is taught as a seminar. There's very little lecture that goes on. The class size is kept very small, so we are able to face one another to discuss what we've read or uh, what we're researching, and they really are able to find their voice within that class. And I think what that does for me as the teacher, too, is it makes it, every course is fresh, because every time I teach it, it's completely different, because the students add so much to the course. And sometimes I find even my perspective on the subject matter changes according to what they're bringing into the mix as well. I have had great teachers, and my experience was with an honors program that took what was otherwise a very large and sometimes unwieldy student body and whittled it down to course seminar courses. And what I think is so unique and wonderful about this program is that it gives every student that opportunity to engage in an upper level seminar to see what higher level learning really can and should be like. But they get that experience not as an upperclassman only, but as soon as they walk through the door, they're able to see that. Yes, I've had some wonderful teachers, um, both at the secondary level and certainly um, in my college experience that have mentored me. And you know, their advice sometimes still rings in my head when I'm dealing with a difficult situation. Um, I, to give you one example, my undergraduate thesis advisor, when I was getting so nervous about having to produce a paper that was perfect because I'm a perfectionist, she used to tell me, don't get it right, get it written. And what she meant by that was just do it because if you don't take the first step, you're never going to finish it and you won't think that you'll be able to finish it. And I give that advice to my students now, just take that first step towards that project that you think you can't do and you'll be surprised that all the other pieces will fall into place and the project will get done and it will get done in a good way. I think sometimes students are expect, I see it in their writing portfolios, what they think what I want from them is sort of a regurgitation of what we've done in class. And I, and I think for some of them that is a product of how they've been educated in the past. And my task as a first year seminar instructor is to move them beyond that. And so one of the things that I do to help them realize that, that they are um, focusing on critical thinking is I'll ask them a series of questions at the beginning of the course. And they're, they're fairly loaded questions about healthcare and the healthcare system in the city now and what's working about it and what's not working about it. And they write down their answers, they journal them, and we sort of forget about it. And then at the end of the course, I ask them the same series of questions again and have them write on it without looking back at their answers at that point. And what I find is that their answers in the beginning tend to be very homogenous. You can almost guess what they're going to say. By the end of the course, their answers sometimes are very different from what they answered in the beginning. But overall, if we look at the class as a whole, their answers are very diverse. And it's really interesting for them to, at that point, go back and compare what they did in the beginning of the semester compared to what they're doing now. And they're realizing that while both answers are based on opinion, 
at the end of the course, their opinion that's based on factual evidence that they have gone and educated themselves about a subject. And I think that's when they get it, that that's really what is entailed in, in critically thinking about a subject matter. Not just expressing opinion, but learning how to educate yourself on the subject matter, whatever it is, and then expressing an educated opinion on it. Well, I really try and set up the classroom to be a safe space for them to feel like they can express their ideas and we work on what is the dynamic of a seminar because they don't necessarily know that coming in and so certainly all opinions are respected but then the flip side of that coin is that they have to be offered in a respectful manner so there is certainly a way of getting students to feel like they can express themselves but do so in a way that is going to be respectful to their students as well as the professor. I, I think that sort of all comes into the making of a good quality seminar. Every s faculty member that teaches a first year seminar goes through Faculty Academy and that is run through the first year experience program and it is um, a series of seminars. We have three in the springtime in the evenings and then we have a week in May that's an intensive workshop and what we're doing this year is we're trying to help these professors to design their courses backwards. And what that means is we're starting with the learning outcomes. What do you want these students to have when they leave your seminar? What skills? And once you identify that, then you work from that point sort of backwards and figure out, okay, well, what sort of activities and assignments would help the students get to that point? And then lastly, what sort of readings, various different texts could they be engaging in that would help them with that as well? And we also have guest speakers. There's so many people who are knowledgeable at Loyola. We try and bring them in to talk about different aspects like critical thinking, like how do you incorporate social justice into your courses? All those kinds of things. How do you make sure that your course is academically rigorous? And yet it's going to be enjoyable for the students as well. So the faculty members actually do homework. They have readings and things like that. And they are slowly kind of compiling their courses as they go along. And, and what we find is that they often tell us that this is a great refresher for all of their teaching. And they're utilizing the skills that they're learning in Faculty Academy for whatever it is that they teach. I have found that teaching a first year seminar has really helped all of my teaching and of course you know part of my role is to organize the faculty academy and when I'm thinking about the literature and reading about how it is that students learn especially first-year students because they really are unique at that age and you're helping them with that transition and once you start to read about it and really sort of think about it it definitely informs the way that you're teaching it revolutionizes the way that you teach because you will no longer get up in front of a class and stand behind a podium and lecture it's just not going to that's not going to form the basis of how you teach because we know now there's been so much literature about how students learn that that's not necessarily the best way to reach them. So I've actually changed all of my courses based upon what I have um, gathered for Faculty Academy. I have aha moments in um, virtually every time I teach my freshman seminar because the students are coming up with ideas and, and one of the things that's interesting with what I teach in particular with post care healthcare in post Katrina New Orleans is that there's it's always changing it is a situation in flux and so sometimes they'll bring research in that I'm not aware of yet because it's just literally coming out in a magazine article in a newspaper in some other form of media and sometimes it does sort of change the way that you think about the subject matter and I think that that is fascinating and as a historian I love that because it's sort of living history that they're getting to uncover. I think you know that you're doing a good job when the students tell you that they are enjoying the class even though it's making them work really hard. I love when I introduce a project to them and they sort of sometimes look like deer in headlights and then I say, okay, let's take a step back. Here are the steps we're gonna do. This is how I'm gonna help you to learn how to do the project. And at the end of the day, when they've done it and they have that look of pride that they have created this project that they didn't maybe think that they had the skill sets to do, I think that that's how you know. And then sometimes you get one that says they're gonna change their major because of the way you made them look at the world. Things like that are extremely rewarding. Right now, this is the only one that I have taught, so we'll see. I think the sky's the limit for these seminars. They can be experimental, they can be creative, and they can be academically rigorous. And, and I think that just gives you, as a teacher, so many opportunities. There's just 
your creativity is really your only limitation there. These courses are the gateway to the common curriculum. So they have to be academically rigorous. They have to introduce students to those common curriculum skill sets that they're going to need to have in order to move on. They do pass through a screening process, um, a double tiered screening process right now, to make sure that they are, are meeting all of the um, qualities that they need to for the common curriculum. I think one of the strengths of the program comes from the interdisciplinary nature. The students don't necessarily think of my class as a history class. In fact, I don't have any history majors in my class. But what the interdisciplinary approach does is it enables them to realize that there is more than one way of looking at a problem. And in my class, we I bring in physicians who talk about what is it like to work in healthcare in New Orleans right now? Physicians and other healthcare workers who are actually working in New Orleans when Katrina hit. They watched documentary about what was it like being in Charity Hospital on a Saturday night. They read um, excerpts of what patients have to say. They read what physicians and nurses have to say. And so they're able to get at this subject matter from all sorts of different angles and realize that, you know, it the way that English approaches a topic is different from the way that history approaches a topic or the sciences, but that they can all study the same topic and they all have something unique to add to the mix. And when they start thinking along those lines, I mean, that's really changing the way that they think. And I think that's one of the things that their college education should do for them. It's definitely a call to action because I think as they get more and more interested in what's going on in healthcare, in the city of New Orleans. They're realizing that it's important not just to the city, not just to the region, but it also brings up national concerns. I mean, the way that healthcare is delivered is changing in this country. And I want them to have an awareness of that and an opinion on that. And I want them to think about um, ideas of social justice. How should healthcare be delivered to everyone, even those who can't afford to have decent insurance? And so they're, they're definitely, um, call to action and to at least be concerned about these issues and have an idea of where they think it should go. And I allow them to do that, to project into the future. What do you think New Orleans should do? How can this act as a model for the country in general? We start with yellow fever and we talk about how is disease shaped by socioeconomic factors? How does that impact the way that a sufferer is viewed? How do specific diseases have an even greater impact? And then we talk about health care and public health policy. If public health policy is, as, it, as we know historically, so often shaped by specific disease outbreaks and recurrent epidemic disease outbreaks, how does that have to do with people who um, are typically lower down on the social strata? You know, we talk about ethnicity and disease and the way that they experience disease differently and the means available for healing for people Throughout history, we can see that it has been determined by their socioeconomic status. And so it's really interesting then to talk about what's going on now in healthcare and how there is still a component of that. And I think for my class, that's where the social justice comes in, you know, sort of mapping out where are these disparities now and how can that change in the future if this is done correctly. Of course, there has to be a grade assigned, it's the grade that they've earned at the end of the semester, but one of the ways that I do that is I weight what they do in the second half of the class more heavily than what they're doing in the beginning and it gives them a chance to find their feet and to be grounded in it. They do a writing portfolio that from day one the, the questions that I throw out there about healthcare is in it. Every scrap of writing, every reflection that they're doing, the discussion questions that they're coming up with, all of that. And I grade that at the very end of the semester and I grade it as a whole. So that way it enables them to have growth throughout the semester but not to be negatively assessed because they weren't at a specific point from the beginning of the class. I'm looking more at their growth throughout the semester and I make that very clear to them so they know exactly what is expected of them and it gives them I think a bit of freedom to flounder a little as, as you will, you know, as you're trying to get to this next level of critical thinking. I think the program is off to a great start. I see it evolving um, with more co-curricular um, opportunities for students because that really does help them to connect that learning doesn't happen just in the classroom. It's not something that happens within four walls. It's something that happens just as, as um, nicely outside of a classroom situation. So I'd like to see more co-curricular programming. I think that we, we will see that. 
and um, just drawing in more of our best and brightest professors. I think many of them have a desire to teach these courses and it's wonderful for the students to have access to these wonderful professors just right from the get-go. The topics are really diverse in first year experience seminars. They can range anything from New Orleans cultures and we have a thematic cluster that uh, there's one that's Creole crossroads. There's one that talks about food in the culture of New Orleans. My course talks about disease and healing in New Orleans. And yet there are courses that talk about the making of the atomic bomb. There are um, courses that focus very heavily on social justice, and there's one um, on diversity in America. There's one on modern day slavery. So it really, I think they cater to the students' interests. Students are able to look through a list of 20 seminars and find hopefully very easily something that they're interested in. Hopefully the difficult part for them is whittling it down to their top three choices. The goals of the program are to transition students from their high school experience into college level learning and college level thinking. And we do that by encouraging their creativity, having them um, concentrate on original thought and really trying to introduce them to a holistic interdisciplinary Jesuit education. And all of these courses, as diverse as they are, they all really embrace the goals of thinking critically and acting justly. So by the end of the course, they're ready for an upper level seminar. They, um, their critical thinking has advanced to the point where they no longer need to be lectured. They need the background information, of course, but they are also ready to interact with each other and with the professor on a much different level.